In this video, I'm going to do a quick introduction into what sigma notation is all about and how it relates to IB maths. So sigma is actually a Greek name. Sigma is the capital S in the, in the Greek alphabet. So sigma has a symbol that looks like this. And you've probably seen it in, um, if you've watched any mathematics movie, movie where someone's doing mathematics on the wall and they'll have infinity here and they'll have something and it will look very complicated with this sigma sign, but uh, it's actually not as scary as it looks. So I'll introduce what it is via a question. So if I had something like this, this sigma, which is the sum of, and let's just say I had k equals one, and I'm going to have in brackets here k plus two, and I'm going to have a five. Now this here, this has an answer, and this actually does mean something. It means that if we start with whatever this is here, this value for k, so k equals one will be our starting value. If we sub k equals one in to whatever we have here in our expression, we're going to get some value here. If we sub k equals one in, we're going to get one plus two, which is three. Now, what we then have to do is we need to sum, so three plus, and we need to go up to the next k value, which would be two. You go up by all of the integers. So you go to k equals two. So if k did equal two, you'd sub the two in. Two plus two is four. So 4 will be our term. And then we need to sum again. k equals 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. Then we need to sum again. k equals 4. 4 plus 2 is 6. Now when do we stop? Well, we stop when k reaches this top number, which in this case is 5. So this will be the last one. If k has now reached the top number 5, 5 plus 2 uh, is 7. So this here actually just means 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7. It's this equation if we sub in the starting value and we keep going up to the end value. So if we just add this up, we're going to get 7 plus 5 is 12, then 18, and then 25. Okay, so this is an example of what sigma notation is. If we have something like this, this is the, the more compact form. Okay, I'll do another example. Uh, let's just say we have, let's go with a sigma. Let's go k equals, and we're going to start now a little bit different. I'm going to start at 2 and go up to 5. This can be any number here. And I'm going to have 1 over 2 to the k. Okay, let's use what we did up here. This means we start with our first value when k equals 2, and we sub that in. So we're going to get 1 over 2 to the power of 2. So 1 over 2. 2 squared, and then sum, and then we have k equals 3. It'll be 1 over 2 to the power of, now k is 3, plus 1 over 2 to the 4, and we stop once k is our top number, so plus 1 over 2 to the 5. Now we can work this out, this is 1 on, one on 4, plus 1 on 8, plus 1 on 2 to the 4 is 16, plus 1 on 32, and I think you get the, the message here. We could all get a common denominator. I will do it. This is still going to be 1 on 32. Our common denominator here will be 32. So we'll have 2, 32. This will be 4, and 32. This would be 8. And then 8 plus 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14, plus 1 is 15. So this has a value of this. So in IB questions, they do sometimes try and link sigma notation to arithmetic and geometric series questions, because think about an arithmetic and geometric series, it's when we're summing up an amount of terms, and they might say, oh, I want you to find the sum of the first five terms, and instead of asking that, they might actually write it in this format, and this is where sometimes students struggle to, to link the two topics, they'll look at this and go, oh, what's this? Greek symbol here, and, and I haven't learned this before, but this is actually just saying it's the sum of if we sub in our first term all the way up to our fifth term, and we're going to actually just get the sum of the first five terms. So these questions are actually just usually a arithmetic or a geometric series question. Okay, so that's just a brief introduction to what sigma notation looks like.